Sarah Cavett. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening, Executive Baker, elected officials, members of the staff, citizens. My name is Sarah Cavett, and I have lived in Fort Washington for 36 years. I am speaking as a private citizen. I firmly believe that the major responsibilities of government are public safety, since economic development does not flower if everyone doesn't feel safe and secure. I also believe that government is judged by how it treats its most vulnerable citizens, our youth and our seniors. Therefore, monies should be allocated based on those priorities, public safety, education, and senior citizens. Whatever is possible to be done by the county, at the county executive's level when it comes to education should be done. I'm going to be submitting specific remarks, and so my comments now are very general. I want to compliment your administration on the improvements to the county website, particularly with the spending disclosure section, which does help provide some transparency to the budget process, which we did talk about last year. The initiation of 311 and County Click are also very valuable and very useful. However, we're still having a lot of problems with technology failures when it comes to live webcasts, and we believe that we should be able to consistently and regularly access our government at work, and that includes county council committee meetings via the internet. As most people know, I am a proponent of the zero-based budgeting process. I am hopeful that it could be used at least as an experiment when it comes to the newly established Department of Permits in Inspections and Enforcement. Lastly, we must spend at least the amount of money we spent last year, and if not more, on DPWT and the Department of Environmental Resources and the new department. Enforcement and inspectors of our own laws and regulations, absolutely mandatory. The lack of enforcement of Chesapeake Bay critical area regulations, noise ordinances, etc., all take a, a negative impact, have a negative impact on our quality of life and on economic development. I thank you very much for allowing me to speak, and I would like to submit my additional comments for the record. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gavin. Anthony Zambadino. Good evening, County Executive Baker, my fellow Prince George citizens. Good evening. My name is Anthony Zamperdino, and I'm here tonight representing the ARC of Prince George's County. As a member of the Board of Directors and Chair of their Government Affairs Committee, I am pleased to have this opportunity to share some comments with you in our efforts to prioritize the government, the county's spending options in the, for the coming fiscal year. First, let me thank you for your support, which our agency and individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities and their families have received in the past year. We've been blessed as an organization to receive grants from the Department of Family Services, the Department of Housing and Community Development, as well as the Community Partnership Grant Program. Each of these grants are vital in supplementing state funding, which were provides a large safety net and a variety of services to meet the needs of over 2,000 individuals within the county who receive a range of information, referrals, educational and direct services from the ARC. We compliment you and your staff on the Transforming Neighborhood Initiatives, but we would ask that as you revitalize these areas and bring hope and progress to residents, and as you continue your efforts, we urge you to broaden your scope and allocations to include needs for those with intellectual and developmental disabilities who may not be clustered in any geographic area of the county, 
but who nevertheless are vulnerable and at risk. Because of their limited income, especially if they rely on Social Security and Medicaid, they are often faced with the difficult choices which limit their ability to fully enjoy a positive quality of life. We would like to work with your office and the County Council to expand employment opportunities for those with disability who are able and want to work and thereby contribute to the county. We foresee important opportunities as the economic climate continues to improve and your focus on economic development expands, bringing new jobs and opportunities for all Prince Georgians. Our goal is to assure that those with disabilities are not left behind. We have begun a dialogue with your staff in anticipation of developing collaborative efforts towards this goal. For example, each year approximately 150 students with disabilities are discharged from our school system. We need to find a place for them to go. I know I only have a few more seconds. We've already submitted comments of this speech. The last thing I'll say is working with your office we can develop a strong partnership which will benefit the disability community, which is growing. As a county employee staff and work to support individuals with disabilities in their efforts to seek and maintain jobs, in this way our partnership will benefit the county as a whole. As your economic development plans continue to expand, surely there can also be an increased employment opportunities for those with disabilities. We understand that the county is not in a position to provide a great deal of funding for direct services, but with your leadership, can begin to provide increased opportunities for those who want to and are able to work. This is a win-win situation, and I thank you for listening to me for three minutes. Thank you, Anthony, and uh, thank you for your work that you're doing. David Prince. Good evening, everyone, and um, first I would like to begin with um, thanking the um, County Executive's Office as well as the Council and uh, all of our Prince George's County government leaders. I think there have been a lot of improvements to the county, and um, actually I am looking forward to uh, the next few years. Um, just a couple of items um, that I would like to bullet that I think we might want to uh, take note of as we engage in future planning um, in regard to transportation needs on 210 um, it's there's an, a pretty obvious need for bus shelters um, some uh, strange uh, things that you see along the uh, route when you see mothers and ca baby carriages trying to cross 210 it, it really is a, 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 a great concern um, also um, in regard to street markings and painting, that it generally is a good job, but there are some areas where there needs to be some improvement. Um, I also echo what was said earlier about uh, increased uh, traffic uh, safety and enforcement. Um, red light running, that's, I still see some of that. Um, one other area um, in regard to storm preparation, uh, I noticed that our county doesn't provide uh, sandbags to residents. I wonder if that's something we should be uh, working towards. Uh, I would like to uh, see a public campaign to improve the image uh, of Prince George's County. Uh, I know that we, we have, there have been efforts in, in previous administrations and of course in, in yours, Mr. Baker. I just think that uh, in terms of our interaction uh, with uh, other counties and the district, I think that uh, we could get a, a, a big public uh, backing and support from our citizens in the county and I'd like to see that campaign uh, begun. Uh, two other points. Um, if it's possible uh, that we could get uh, more aggressive enforcement in regard to litter and illegal dumping. Uh, periodically I'm seeing uh, dumping in the county and uh, I'm, I'm hoping that we keep enforcement aggressive in this area. And lastly, um, I think I'll stop there and just say 
I think uh, the county's heading in the right direction. Thank you. Thank you. County Executive Baker, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I am Earl. Mr. Gums. How are you doing today? Fine, thank you. Good. I am Earl Gums. I reside at 2001 Gaither Street in the Hillcrest Heights section of Temple Hills. I am the president of the Hillcrest Marlow Heights Civic Association. I have been a resident of Hillcrest Heights for over 42 years and have served on the executive board of the Hillcrest Marlow Heights Civic Association for over 40 years and have served as its president for the past 13 years. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you tonight. There are approximately 50,000 residents in the Hillcrest Marlow Heights community who reside in single family residence, multifamily units, and townhouses complexes. Several of the multifamily units located on 23rd Parkway, Colebrook Drive, and Curtis Drive have a required constant service from public safety personnel. I am here tonight to urge you to prepare a balanced budget that will provide essential services to the Hillcrest Marlow Heights community. Funding should be provided for the following. Provide proper staffing in the area of area schools to reduce class sizes, adequate public safety personnel to assure a more timely response to criminal activity, additional prosecutors to assure the rapid disposition of criminal cases, funding to speed the resurfacing of area streets, 23rd Parkway, Iverson Street, funding to assure inspectors are available to assure adherence to property standards by residential and commercial property owners. Funding to assure fire and EMS personnel have the resources to respond to emergencies rapidly. Funding to provide mandatory parental training where applicable to persons receiving public assistance. And funding to provide training to unemployed youths to assist in their development of employable skills. Funding to provide incentives to developers tax abatements, et cetera, to exp expedite development adjacent to metro stations in the area, Naylor Road and Southern Avenue. To fund the various activities, a concerted effort should be undertaken to lobby county, state, and federal officials to develop methods to enhance the revenue stream. This can be accomplished by the following. Increase the sin taxes, tax on liquor and tobacco, et cetera. Increase tolls on state roads. Review the tax code to close personal and corporate loop loopholes. And lastly, review the feasibility of removing trim. Thank you for providing me this opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Gums, for your testimony and suggestions. Thank you very much. Barbara Simon. Good evening. Uh, for the record, I'm Barbara Simon at 121 Lassner Lane in Greenbelt, Maryland. I represent tonight the Friends of Prince George's County Libraries, of which I am the president. Our library has 19 branches with their own Friends groups, but together all the groups form the county group. And on the subject of the library's budget, we always speak with one voice to advocate full funding. We are fortunate to have an excellent library system with numerous small branches tailored to the community and larger branches offering a wider selection of materials and more programming, especially for children. Our local library serves as information centers in addition to having collections and programming and also offer space for community meetings. Our library is constantly adjusting to changing demographic patterns. The past year saw the opening of the New South Bowie branch as population grew in that area. How does our library system contribute to our Transforming Neighborhood Initiative project, which targets specific neighborhoods? Hillcrest Heights, Marlowe Heights is one of the six TNI neighborhoods. Its local library, Hillcrest Heights, was recently renovated. Now there are 61 computers there for the public, more than double the previous amount, including special early learning computer stations in the children's areas. Kentland Park, Palmer Park, which is another TNI neighborhood, is served by Glen Arden Library. 
which is under renovation and will reopen in March. The new improved branch will have 33 computers, a public fax, a wireless laptop area, an enhanced children's area, new windows, new carpeting paint, two group study rooms, and a new customer service desk, and new ADA compliant restrooms. The Friends is a countywide group have always supported the library system having many branches as the best way to make libraries accessible to our diverse population. To close even one branch is not the way to balance the budget. Closing a branch will not only affect one neighborhood, our system is highly integrated and the loss of one library branch would impact the whole system. No neighborhood should ever be singled out for such destructive action. All of our neighborhoods deserve a nearby library. The library has been successful in the past in creating new library branches and renovating and expanding existing ones. Full funding of the budget will permit this pattern to continue. And I'd like to submit my remarks, please. Thank you, Ms. Simon.